another Kid Dimensions Lunch and Learn. Uh, today's topic, selection techniques for navigating SOLIDWORKS assemblies. Uh, my name is Kevin Holbrook. I'm part of our technical staff here at CAD Dimensions. Now this to topic was actually suggested from a few customers uh, when we talked to them a little bit about assemblies, large assemblies, and just kind of working within the environment and, and doing a few things as far as uh, working with only certain bits of data uh, within an assembly. So I just call this selection techniques. We are going to review uh, a few maybe uh, things that you already know, but maybe introduce some things that maybe you're not using and can put into your your day-to-day -day life uh, working within assemblies. So I'm really going to answer two questions today uh, when it comes to assemblies. Um, first of all, how do I select what I want? I, I put this up there as a question simply because I do it myself. When I am working within an assembly and I'm doing things like hiding, showing, suppressing, or creating configurations and so on, I do a lot of manually selecting parts. And, uh, you know, it's definitely not the most efficient method when you have all these other tools that we're going to talk about today. Um, and then I want to just talk about why does it make it easier. Um, that's another question uh, that I'll get answered for you today. And I, I think if you, you know, do some due diligence and put these things within your process, you'll absolutely speed up uh, your assembly work uh, with a little bit of selection technique. So first, let's let's answer the why. Now we have about 30 minutes worth of material today. It's not a not a huge topic, but um, why would you want to learn different ways of selecting items inside of an assembly? First of all, all day long we're hiding and showing components, right? Well, we have to select what you want to hide or we mouse over it and hit tab, right? But if we were to hide a bunch of components, um, we need to know the different ways in which we can grab those components and get them hidden really quickly. And then on the reverse of that is get them selected and show them very quickly. Um, the most inefficient method is to go to your tree and find the file, right click on it and hide. Uh, I think those days are kind of gone. We have to use these selection techniques. Same thing for suppressing and resolving. Now you may be using this to create configurations. You may just you know, have a variation of a part you just don't want to show or you used it for some some design work you just don't want to show. But we need to be able to make those selections, again, very, very quickly. There's commands that are, uh, I would say, not used as often as they should, like isolate. Um, I'm going to show that a little bit of how we uh, select components and only show the components that we're working on. Um, all of this really goes to what I think is the most effective use of selection techniques, is to help you create display states so you can hide and show what you want and essentially work on only what you need to work on in the assembly level. So this is the why. The why do we have all these different techniques? Now I want to talk about the techniques uh, and I'm going to go through these in depth, talk about them. Some of these are very basic uh, like the box and lasso select but there's a few little nuances I want to talk, to talk about all the way down really to advanced select which is really the, the coup de grace of, of the selection techniques and probably the one tool that very, very few of our users have stumbled upon or even been able to add that to their process. So I'm not going to go through these individually in a PowerPoint. I don't think it's useful there. We're going to jump right into SOLIDWORKS and start to talk about some of the selection techniques. Now the example I have is an assembly of I don't know, five, eight hundred components and you know when you get to the point of making selections you want to pick the right selection technique to use and I want to start with just the one that we're all used to which is the box select. Now the box select uh, really works in two ways. If I start to the left and draw a box over components anything that is fully within the box will be selected. Now I'm going to just rotate this model slightly and you'll notice that the bolts on the back side of this plate also got selected. So box select is, uh, is a very simple tool.
tool to use to do that. However, it, it falls down in some cases. Uh, for instance, if I want to just box select from left to right, and I'm over a lot of components, maybe I'm even zoomed in even more here. Uh, if I try to box select over this, as soon as I hit my left mouse to draw the box, it thinks I'm trying to, to select the components, therefore I cannot draw the box. So a little bit of uh, limitation to that. Um, on top of that, the box select works in, in both directions. If I go left to right in window select over, only things that are completely within that window uh, in that Z depth into the screen will get selected, and that's why the components on the back end. However, if you go the other direction and go right to left, this will allow you to select anything that's crossing that box. So as soon as you touch any component, um, it just gives you kind of a wider swath of components that you're able to make selections to. Now, that's pretty basic. Now, they added a new one um, a few releases back called Lasso Selection. Now, if you're not using 2016, this this will be a little bit different as far as where the location of some of these components are or these selection techniques, but you're looking for Lasso Selection essentially on your right-click menu. Now, lasso selection is really you just drawing the boundary of the area that you want to select. So what this will allow me to do, and again, I have to start off a component, which is where these things uh, kind of work out for me. And i got to make sure I get all the way around where this component is. But it allows you to basically draw a border around the components you want to select and anything completely inside of that. Now, the thing I want you to, to note on this is that when you draw the lasso in a second direction, so the uh, counterclockwise motion, it does not work uh, like the box select going in the opposite direction where anything crossing. So this tool uh, particularly is just uh, what is inside the lasso selection. What's nice about this is it makes it easy to, you know, to select components uh, that maybe are around other components so you can weave in and out of the components to pick things that are, are around them. So uh, that is the lasso selection. Now there is also in the right click shortcut of SOLIDWORKS, uh, they've added a, a selection pull down menu which will also have the box selection and lasso selection. Um, if you're not using 2016, I, I believe it's oriented uh, a little bit differently just there at the top of the uh, right-click menu. Uh, another one I want to point out is, is called the magnified selection. Now, a lot of times you're, uh, you're working from a distance here and you need to select, let's say, those fasteners again. If I were to turn on the magnified selection, which used to be triggered solely by the G key on the keyboard, which it still does work with the G key out of the box. So if you select G, it turns on the magnifying glass. Now what this allows me to do is instead of zooming in on the particular model and making selections, I can zoom in using the magnifying glass, make my selections without zooming out. Each time I bump the magnifying glass, it will keep the same zoom level and allow me to make the selections. Uh, I won't say the issue with this, but if I wanted to select fasteners on the back side here, I will still have to rotate the model uh, to be able to see any fasteners that's sitting on the back side, for instance, this one here. But I can still control the zoom level that I have here. So magnified selection is another one that uh, you just want to kind of keep in your back pocket. G key is is how you uh, get access to that. So there's some basic techniques. Now I want to move over to the feature manager for a moment. Um, we're forever inundated, especially at the assembly level, with so much information in the feature tree um, that we need to make it useful for, again, our selection techniques to, to filter out the information that we really want to look at. Now, most of you are aware of the filter dialog at the top of the feature manager. 
Now, what this filter dialog allows you to do is type in something, and it will search the feature manager for that information. Now, what most people don't know, however, is that it searches more than just the file name. It also searches all the custom properties and tags that belong to that file. Now, let me show you this slowly here. It's a fairly good assembly. If I just start to type in purchased, now as I'm typing, it's filtering the graphics area for the information that I want to see. Now, keeping in mind that what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to select something to either suppress, hide show, create display states, to do something else to it. Now, if I look at the feature tree now, it shows me only the components that meet this criteria. Now, take this first subassembly for instance here. Uh, it sees this 0, 0, 0200. Within that, it's a subassembly, and it shows several components within it. If I mouse over them, it actually tells you the custom property that it found the information in. So I was looking for purchase parts in this case, and the parts have been defined with a custom property as purchased, and now I can see all my purchase parts in the graphics area. Now since our conversation is about selection techniques, now that I've used the filter in the feature manager, all I have to do, let me go from lasso select to the regular box selection, uh, all I have to do is draw a window in the graphics area, and I've now selected all of my purchased parts. Okay, a couple things that I can do here. Um, there's a command called isolate. Now I'm using isolate because I want to get to the point where I have a display state that shows only my purchase components. So what isolate does is it just tells the software to hide everything else and only show what I had selected. Now I use the filters to get everything selected. Now isolate is a mode where you get into isolation and you exit out. When you exit out, it brings all the components back. Now the reason I'm showing isolate is because I want to talk about display states. Now so selection techniques and display states go hand in hand. As a user of SOLIDWORKS, you're always wanting to look at different areas of equipment, different areas of an assembly. And Doing that with configurations is not the best way to do that. Now, I'll explain to you why. Configurations actually have to be rebuilt. Configurations add to the file size. Um, configurations will slow down the file size. So my message is this. If you're just doing things like hiding and showing, uh, changing the color of components, you're changing the uh, view method like hidden line visible, hidden line removed, if you're doing any of that, you want to use display states. Now, I want a display state that just shows my purchase components. You'll notice in the isolate dialog, I can select save to display state, and I'm just going to call this purchased. Now, when I type in purchased as the display state name, all I have to do now is just exit the isolation. It brings all my components back. Now, this is one of the main uses for selection techniques. Because now when I go to the Configuration Manager, you'll see a display state at the bottom called Purchased. Now, I also don't think it's efficient to have to jump to the Configuration Manager to activate the ability to see only your purchase components. Some of you may not know this, but if I, I'm just going to bring my Feature Manager out a little bit. See the little arrow at the top of the Feature Manager which displays the display pane? If you've never jumped in here, this is where we uh, might change transparency, change uh, hidden line visible, hidden line removed. But if you right click on that, it will automatically fly out your display states. And in there, I can pick all my purchase parts. It will automatically filter the graphics area and show me my purchase parts. Okay. Um, to go back to the default, I just pick the default display state and everything pops back. Now that can work with assemblies as well. Um, you pick an assembly, you can isolate it, and then you can save it as a display state. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So using the filter, 
um, I want you to consider that there's a lot more that we can filter it on. Now, a lot of companies are, are designers, engineers, are getting information about the files that they're putting into an assembly maybe after the initial creation of the part or the, the file. For instance, you might be getting a, a part from a customer and you're replacing that part within the assembly often. And maybe you're not filling out custom properties on it. Maybe you're not doing some of this other work. So there's something else I want to add that will allow us once again to make selections. If I decide to go down and let's just select a component here, um, I want to fill out a temporary custom property for this part so I can find it very easily in the assembly. Now it's something called a tag, and that tag is going to allow me to select the item I want very quickly. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of your SOLIDWORKS interface, and I apologize my network internet access thing has popped up here, but there's a little uh, yellow tag. And if you click that on, what this allows me to do is add my own information to this part. So I might uh, call this customer supplied. Okay, once I fill out the tag, I can turn off the little tag window here just by clicking on the icon again. But what this does is it act, is able to be activated through filter. So if I start to type in customer, it filters the graphics area and there's my customer supply part. So the same thing that we had before with the ability to filter and make selections, you can tag multiple components at one time, making it easy for you to do things like hide, show, suppress, and so on. Um, so I think this, this filter wind window goes a little bit further. Um, I mentioned selecting sub-assemblies. Now sub-assemblies can be selected from the feature manager, or they can be selected from the graphics area. Now, from the graphics area, we've changed a little bit of how we select sub-assemblies over the last few releases. If I right-click on this particular component here, which happens to be a clutch, if I right-click on it, you're going to see an option to select sub-assembly. Now, this happens to be multiple levels deep within the assembly. When I select sub-assembly, you're going to get a little window that allows me to pick from the hierarchy of what I want to work with. And this happens to be a clutch. I can find the clutch, uh, select the sub-assembly that the clutch belongs to, and now I can do something like isolate. Now that I have it isolated, I can do things like hiding, suppressing, editing, all because I was able to use the selection technique of sub-assemblies to grab that sub-assembly and only show me the information that I want to use. Now let's go a little further because I'm in 2016 now. It's, some things have changed, even made it easier. If I select the clutch, you'll notice uh, off to the left-hand side of my graphics area is something called breadcrumbs. Now breadcrumbs can be moved to your cursor by hitting D on your keyboard. And breadcrumbs are really the same information you would access in the feature manager but it's right there at your cursor. Now, if I start to mouse over some of those icons, it's actually showing me the entire hierarchy of what I right-clicked on. I, I right-clicked on a face of a, an extrusion that belongs to this boss extrude 2, which belongs to this body, which belongs to this part, and this part has four mates on it. And then it belongs to a sub-assembly, another assembly up, and then the top level. So I could actually select this clutch by using the breadcrumb. And again, I can create a display state. I can hide a show. I can suppress or unsuppress using the selection technique. Okay, so select subassembly is also a, a nice little tool. Now, there is one, and this may take just a moment here. If I select a bunch of components here, um, just using Windows Select, I'll select a whole bunch. There is an option called invert selection. So invert selection allows me to, to take what I have selected and pick everything that I did not select. 
Um, obviously, this would be used if uh, there was very few components you didn't want to select and you wanted everything else. Um, in this particular assembly, it does take a moment uh, to be able to do that um, using the invert selection. But again, it's, it's just the same as if you went through and you picked each component in the feature manager. Now the question is, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to hide them? Do you want to show them? Do you want to suppress them? Do you want to create a display state? Okay. These techniques are, allow you to get a hold of them much, much quicker so you can do something to them. Now, I find it important to be able to select things uh, over and over and over again. I'm going to introduce two things at once here. Um, first of all, let's just zoom into this center assembly here. And, uh, you know, I found a bunch of, of hex nuts uh, inside that assembly. Now, I want to know how many of those hex nuts are in this assembly. And uh, I'm forever doing this. I go to the feature manager. I can use maybe my filter. I can type in hex nut. But what if I have different size hex nuts? Um, you know, I want to find everything the same size. Now, here's the tool that I, I think is going to, if you can integrate it in your process, it's really going to give you more flexibility for selection. At the standard toolbar, the select arrow, everyone's familiar with select. It's the, uh, the standard tool for making picks within SOLIDWORKS. But there's a consolidated menu built into that. This consolidated menu has, again, more selection techniques. We've introduced some of these already, like magnified box and lasso. But there's a bunch of custom ones that are there by default at the bottom. One of those is select identical components. Wow, I just told the software to select all components exactly like the one I had selected. And now I can come in here and say, you know what, isolate these so I can see what I got. I don't even know how many I have here. So I have a bunch of different pieces of hardware here. And now I can choose to do something with them. Hide, show. Again, these are selectable. So um, maybe I want to edit them. Maybe they came from toolbox. I don't want, because in 2016, I can edit multiple toolbox components in one shot. I can save it as a display state. But again, I'm able to go ahead and... Uh, select those easily. Now let's say I'm always going to select these hex nuts. I got, for some reason, I'm making a lot of uh, back and forth of hiding and showing these particular components. Maybe it's a mold base and you're hiding the, you know, the uh, moving half of the mold constantly. Um, what you can do after the selection on the right click menu near the bottom, you're going to find an option to save the selection. Now, when I save the selection and exit the isolate, what you'll find at the top of the feature manager, if I get to the top here, is a new folder called selection sets. Now, selection sets really is just the ability to repeat what you've already done. If I expand that, you'll see the selections I just previously made and saved. Uh, if I use the Windows slow click, I can call this my hex nut, you know, whatever the size happens to be, um, selection. And now if I ever want to hide or show those very, very quickly, I just select the sex selection set and I can go ahead to hide here, or in this case, I'll just isolate uh, so you can see what I had. Now, that looks like a few more components that I had originally. Uh, it's got all the subassemblies. Yeah, I think we got all the sub-assemblies within that. So there's, uh, it grabbed all the uh, sub-assemblies when I select, said select identical. So these are the identical sub-assemblies. So I may have to tweak how I save that selection set instead of using identical. But the key is the selection set, set gets stored, and I can go back to it. At any point in time, I can go back, turn that on, turn that off. Now, that kind of leads me into this pull-down menu a little bit more because I want to talk about all the different options that are available to me here. Now, I'm going to jump to a little different assembly here 
um, just to, to show this. And I, if you were at any of the rollouts, you probably saw this assembly used. Um, the advanced selection techniques uh, have some predefined settings for selection. Now, I looked all over. I, I tried to find a way to hotkey the advanced selection tools because um, I thought it would be great if I could just hit, you know, U for select, you know, selecting suppressed components or a keyboard sh shortcut, and that's not the case. However, when you right-click in the graphics area in assembly, the pull-down menu or the consolidated menu directly on the right-click does have the same set of criteria for selection in that menu. Um, you're probably going to have to gauge where you go, but I think the right-click menu is probably the faster method. Now, let's just talk a little bit about some of these. I'm forever, selecting anything that's already suppressed. You know, uh, in this case, I don't think there is, but if I say select suppressed, um, if there are no components, you can see it actually brings up a message. Let's, uh, let's suppress something here just so we have something suppressed. Uh, if you want to find out even in lower levels where something's suppressed, you select suppressed. And then again, I just isolate it um, so that we can... Uh, where's my isolate? Oh, it's not showing. So it shows you in the uh, feature manager. You can't isolate it because it's not showing. Um, but it allows you to get that selection. You can save it as a selection so you can see uh, which components are suppressed. Um, hidden components, there's another one. Um, select everything that's hidden and show it uh, using the advanced selection. I really like the select mated to. Um, so you pick a component and say select mated to. And now you can isolate and see all the components that are mated to the one that you had selected. Now, here's, here's where I'm, I'm talking the, the ability to improve your speed within assemblies. Because if I'm working on a mating condition, a mating problem or mating components, or changing out a part, you know, if I could just pick all the components it's mated to and only work there, I'm going to be so much faster than having to weed through all the extra information that's in there. And that's why these uh, selection techniques are important. Uh, I showed you the select identical components. Select internal components. If it's an enclosed volume, it can select components inside the volume or outside the volume. This one I kind of like, select by size, where you can give it a percentage of the overall assembly size. I'm going to go real small here. Let's say 2%. I can hit the little uh, preview selection, and it actually picked 407 components. And now they're still selected. Notice they're in blue here. I can, again, isolate, create a display state, hide show. In this case, very, very quickly, I was able to select all the small pieces of, of hardware in this particular assembly um, just by using the selection criteria. Now, there's another one called Select Toolbox. Now, select toolbox uh, when you're adding hardware from the toolbox library. The toolbox library actually puts a property in the file that allows it to easily be searched using the advanced select tools. Select toolbox will go through your entire assembly and again find all the hardware and allow you to easily create a a uh, display state with them hidden, or a configuration with them suppressed. So ask yourself this. If you're working inside of an assembly, are you working with all the hardware showing all the time? Uh, it's very easy and quickly to be able to hide them all and show them all so you're not dealing with the overhead of the assemblies. Now, one last thing I want to show before we do close uh, today, because I think we've introduced a lot here, the advanced select predefined uh, selections that you have in the pull-down menu were created using a tool called advanced select. And you can see that option in the pull-down menu here. There are a lot of different criteria that you can use to select things. And that criteria can be and or or statements. So show me everything that's either a weldment or sheet metal. So how do we do that? Now, first of all, we, in the 
search criteria, we just define a category of search. And there's several different category types. I'm going to use file type. Now, we set up the condition, the file type equals. And what type of file is SOLIDWORKS created? Is it a toolbox part? Is it a sheet metal part? Is it a weldment? Is it an imported geometry? You ever just wanted to know what your imported geometry on an assembly looks like to be able to go through and see if they've all imported correctly and the geometry is okay to speed up your assembly? Well, let's do sheet metal part for a moment. Now, once I have that, I can apply this and it makes the selection in the graphics area. Now, if I want to save the search, now all I have to do is name the search. I'm just going to call this SM. Once I name the search, I can hit save and it shows up in my managed searches. Now, this tab allows me to see all the special searches for selection I've created. And if I hit add to favorites, what I've just done is I've created a new pull down on the menu. Now I can select everything that's sheet metal and I can isolate it and find only the sheet metal parts in this particular assembly. Now let's take a, a little bit further look into the criteria that we have here uh, because now you know you can create your own. Uh, there's several different types. One we can look at with whether the mass is volume, mass or volume is more or less than a particular value that you specify. That's looking at the mass and volume values from SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if you've never heard of an envelope in SOLIDWORKS, uh, we can select using an envelope. Think of it as a, a, a dummy part that we can find out how many components are crossing into that part space or touching that part. Um, they use that a lot. Let's say you're creating a, an assembly line and you know where the user is going to be stand, but you want to find out what's within the reach of that user. You can create a dummy part and uh, you know figure out where you need guarding based upon how much they may reach. If a part's an interior detail, that's what the custom uh, interior detail search was. Uh, we can search on custom properties. So all I have to do is pick which custom property I want to search on. Maybe you're constantly searching on custom properties. Um, component status. This is where it gets a little bit more. I can say, what if, what if the component status is resolved, lightweight, needs a rebuild, has an error? What if you just wanted to pick everything with errors in your assembly and isolate them so you can work on just those errors? How about anything that's underdefined, fully defined, overdefined, fixed? No, those are simple searches that make it easy for me to find things just by setting up the managed search criteria and, and saving them within the assembly. How about in-context relations? You know, if it has broken in-context relations, has locked in-context relations, that's another one we can set up a search for. How about the display? Is the display... Uh, hidden line visible, hidden line removed, shaded, high, hidden, shown. Okay, how about the file status? Pick a category here. Is it read only? Does it have write access? Does it uh, show me which user has write access? Does it need a save? Is it out of date? Again, these are search criteria. And then I showed you the file type. So I know we had a short topic today. Um, hopefully you saw that using different selection criteria can help you to navigate in the assembly by hiding, showing, creating display sites, suppressing, resolving. I certainly think it takes some getting used to knowing that those tools are there. Uh, I think you're going to set up some predefined searches that you're going to go to all the time. But I certainly think it can speed up uh, your assembly work. I appreciate everyone coming out today. I uh, realize this was a little bit of a short topic. Uh, at this point, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the questions section, and I will go ahead and answer them. Thanks for attending. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.